Okay, to begin this finale, we are going to get the one and only uh, shield that we should ever care about, the Highland Shield. For that, we need to go back to Hyrule Castle. Bringing in the second phase of how I uh, plan out my visits to Hyrule Castle. This is also why I got the um, shrine in here. It's just much easier this way. We're going to go ahead and make our way to a certain canal. I'll just go ahead and cut to where it is and we'll start a path from there. Okay, so to begin uh, getting the Highland Shield, what we do is we start at this entry point, sort of like a canal entrance right here where I'm at. And this is something that I thought was uh, there should have been much more of um, in the game as a whole, but thankfully it's most Zelda-like, and of course of all places it should definitely be at Hyrule Castle, is that there's much more uh, places to explore. It's not an official dungeon by any means, not by any definition of the sort. But it still has the feel of one, at least, which is ironic because the other thing that was essentially missing from a lot of the Divine Beasts were these components, so I guess they sort of just allocated them separately. Anyway, uh, the castle is, of course, uh, filled with danger, which is well, depending on how under-equipped you are, which you most likely will be on their first attempt or so coming in here, as it should. But there's still plenty of great loot. You got the royal weapons, the high-end royal weapons. Uh, Royal Guardian weapon, I believe. And you'll want to make your way across here using this uh, tram. This cart. It just makes it easier. And then we'll go ahead and make our way around here. So there's a bunch of secrets in this place. There's, you know, plenty of Koroks and all the like. There's plenty of loot. There's actually one or two field bosses in here. And of course, as you might imagine, since the Highland Shield is an important thing, one of those field bosses is something you'll have to face. But like I said, uh, there's a lot of like these like subtle cracks in the doorways that you might have to take a you know, closer look at to make your way through, etc. And um, that is not the way I want to go. And then of course, even uh, reading up on it for the first time, I just wanted to get the Highland Shield because I was so tired of everything breaking. I figured the Highland Shield would be, you know, incredibly useful. It had to be. It's a staple in this series. So we'll go ahead and make our way through here. Um, now, if you follow these, uh, this waterway, you have a chest here, might as well pick it up, it has a topaz. I play this game a little bit too much recently. <laughs> but, you come over here, and then you will have a stall knock. Now, normally these guys don't activate until it's night, but, uh, we're in a dark, dreary castle possessed by Ganon, so, uh, it always counts. So, these stall knocks are just a variant of the Hinox. Hit their eyes, get them down, lower his health. Um, what's different about the Stalnox, though, of course, is that you're going to need to finish off their eye. So, even if, uh, oh, okay, I forgot who does it after a while. Uh, it's kind of like I forget the boss's name. Uh, one of the many water bosses in Zelda, but if he manages to do that stomp and throw his eye out like that, I guess it's totally fine. Uh, it's a subtle difference, very subtle. I wish there was much more to this variant of the, uh, Hinox fight, but, uh, well, whatever. Either way, after this fight, we get the one and only shield you should ever care about, the Hylian Shield. This sucker is durable. Uh, for point of reference, um, like the next spec shield you can get probably takes about five to seven beam weapons from Guardians directly. The Hylian Shield takes about 50. Yeah, you want this thing. Especially helps with learning about uh, parrying their uh, beams. It's very good practice because if you miss, not only do you take some damage, but uh, your shield will take a lot of durability damage, and yeah, the Hylian shield is super tough. You're going to want that. So as I pick up a few things here, what's nice is that the enemies are going to now start dropping a couple of uh, royal weapons, which are some of the only weapons that you'll like use as a stock item. Uh, we now have the Hylian shield. No, don't do that. We now have the Hylian shield, and like I said, Jeruk's protection will always show up now that we have our shield out. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do one more thing before the final fight with Ganon. Uh, I wanted to give this quest stream time because I believe it to be the best side quest in the game. Very much uh, uh, true to Zelda's uh, Zelda game's nature. And so we'll pick it up from there. And as we make our way out of Hyrule Castle, you always have to leave the area and it'll always bring you here. I don't know why. I guess it's just separate loading reasons. We're going to want to go to the one and only shrine we care about. 
are definitely our uh, most favorite shrine in this playthrough, am I right? As it's the same one that we've used for, like, all of our glitches, pretty much. Or, I take that back, I guess the uh, weapon storage doesn't need it. But I digress. So, you kind of have to do a prerequisite quest, side quest, in order to unlock this one. Uh, kind of like the Hearthfire um, edition from uh, DLC to Skyrim. You have to buy this house. There, This is not optional. In order to unlock the Terrytown quest, you have to buy this house, which means you have to deal with this nonsense. So, you go ahead and you talk to this guy. You have to say it's impossible, and then they'll just, you know, have to let these guys go through the motions. So anyway, you have to wait for them to come over here. Um, it's close to, um, I think it's 8 o'clock, 8 or 9 o'clock. If not, these guys would, instead of coming over here where you have to trigger the next part of the quest, they would go to bed. So I would have to uh, have to wait at the... At the bonfire over here. It's just a lot of needless stuff. It's so weird how they would work at night in the storm, but as soon as it's <laughs> they're free, they'll just go to sleep. It's... no, oh, whatever. <laughs> anyway, okay, so we give them the wood, we give them the rupees. And then you finally be able to talk to Hudson, this guy. Uh, he's a, a man of very few words, which is fine. He's about one text box each before you have to uh, just keep talking along. He's going to be talking about making uh, an expansion over the Akala region. And I guess you're supposed to just eventually stumble upon him. I mean, granted, such things would be kind of neat, but uh, unless you're looking it up, you might not find him for a while. That being said, this is precisely why we went to all the trouble of getting this shrine while we were in the Kala region. Now, fun fact, whenever I come to this shrine, uh, Kala has a very poor habit of it being a thunderstorm, but thankfully it's, uh... Well, there's overcast coming and then there's a storm, but for whatever reason, I think it's programmed this way. Whenever you get near the airspace of Terrytown or you're in Terrytown, it's always going to be shining. Eh, it's, it's cute. So as we make our way over here, we'll find Hudson just uh, using his pickaxe. So we go ahead and uh, talk to him and we begin the quest. And he's going to ask for two things. Uh, he's going to ask for bales of wood, increasing succession every single time. And he's going to ask that we find somebody that can provide for the town, but their name has to end in song, kind of like his. It's a running gag. It's like it's a company bylaw or something like that. But anyway, he's going to ask for brutal strength and we're going to ask for a Goron. So... That means we have to, I think I believe I said remember a place on our way to uh, Goron City. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to uh, Elden Tower. Right here. And then we're going to go to this quarry, the Southern Mine. So as we make our way over to the mine, you want to talk to this Goron, Grayson. And you go ahead and go through his dialogue. Uh, he mentions that he wants to find a place where we can use his strength, we can use his construction, definitely to help Hudson over in Terrytown. And through the magic of jump cuts, we go ahead and talk to Hudson for yet our another assignment. He'll ask for more wood, which we'll rightly give to him. And then he's going to ask that we need a merchant, or sorry, he's going to ask for a tailor first. And of course they have to be someone whose name ends in Son, which means we need to go to Gerudo Village. Okay, so not Gerudo Town specifically, it's his outpost before you meet, uh, go into Gerudo Town. You go to uh, Rutsun. Uh, you'll talk to her that um, you need a tailor for Terrytown and then she'll be happy to move over there. Possibly meet somebody. And then we'll go ahead and, uh, through the magic of jump cuts, go ahead and begin the next part. Okay, along with more wood, of course, Hudson is going to ask us to find him a merchant. Specifically, a merchant who is a Rito. And so, once again, 
Thankfully, we have a way to jump cut and to go ahead and travel to these places since for this preparation we've unlocked them. We'll go ahead and go to... Not there. Rito Village. No, not there. We just make our way around from the shrine and we go ahead and talk to Fison here. And he will be more than happy to be our merchant in Terrytown. And then, of course, we'll progress the next part of the side quest. <laughs> And so, once again, Hudson will ask us for, yet again, more bundles of wood and us to find one other person. Mm. Except this time, it's uh, gonna be for a different reason than building uh, Terrytown. So, he got engaged to the young Rudo who we- uh, sorry, not Rudo, the, the Gerudo we found for this place. And he needs somebody to marry them, which is gonna be Azora, and the person whose name has to end with Son again. So... Off to Zora Village. <laughs> so coming in once again to Zora's domain, you uh, as a positive to you know get you to talk to people and NPCs. You have to find these people with these names. Uh, there's plenty of uh, potential candidates you can just go talk to, and I guess it's a way for you to pick up side quests, which you know really helps this one. It would be really fortunate if this ended up being like one of the last ones you ended up doing. Go ahead and talk to this guy. Capson will be um, someone who can marry our couple together and that will actually be the end of the Terrytown side quest which um, I'll provide during the ceremony cutscene oh, why I believe this oh wait actually there is one thing I forget that I forgot oh. <laughs> these guys are rather forgettable which is unfortunate to say about a lot of characters in this game uh, he wants us to uh, go get his old work buddies in order to come in for the ceremony, so back to Hatsuno Village. <laughs> you know, even though we can now do this, you know, just one after the other with all of our teleport points set and, you know, with every, all the directions we would talk to, all of the wood we have, etc. This seemed a lot to me more and more like the chain, <laughs> the, uh, chain mail uh, letters you had to deliver in the Paper Mario games. I mean, it was fun. Uh, but before we uh, move on here, he's going to tell us if we can, you know, decorate our house with more rupees. It's a good rupee dump, but I really wish we could have done this sort of thing in Terrytown. You know, the place we bothered to make, uh, or for that fact, made, is pretty, it's pretty big for this game. I mean, this is easily by far the best side quest. And of course, as we make our way back for the ceremony, just in time, of course, I will explain why. This is the best side quest in the game for, well, simply you could put it, is that it's scale. I mean, it does have us going around and yeah, if you do it one after the other, um, you know, hit after hit, step after step, it seems more like uh, a chore. But ultimately, I think it was very well made, very well grounded. It had you pay attention to, you know, the NPCs you talked to. You actually built a place and made a huge difference Ooh. in Breath of the Wild. And again, I thought it was a missed opportunity that we couldn't set our house here because, I mean, this place looks great. Uh, we got, you know, all of the uh, races represented here and it could have been something more, like a new central hub or a hub though that you create and live in. It would be perfect. Um... Unfortunately, you know, and it has, you know, good humor in it too. It was it felt a lot like a Zelda side quest. But of course, for all that trouble, you do get a um, you notice it's not complete just yet. Go ahead and talk to the happy couple. And they will go ahead and they will give you the uh, reward. Three diamonds, not too bad. I mean, they're not incredibly hard to find, but you know, it, it's nice. But then we come to the real reason why we built Terrytown. This guy. This guy is a vendor. He is a very special vendor. He will be able to um, uh, let you buy a lot of the special armors that you would find. In, uh, he doesn't have anything right now because we didn't bother going to all those shrines yet because of the uh, stat upgrade that we used. But what is very important, it won't show up now because I have it on my back, is that the Hylian Shield will be for sale if it should ever break. And it certainly will, don't get me wrong, you 
take your time to go throughout this whole world, it'll eventually break, and it just won't it just won't break really easily or really fast. And you know you have a steady way to uh, replace it. It's just perfect. So now that we have everything set up, this is uh, in spirit essentially the end of the playthrough in terms of what I've been you know aspiring to. You are now ready to pray to play Breath of the Wild as it was realized. This is, as a Zelda game, an open world explorer. But in order to do that, in order to take advantage of everything, you needed this stuff first, at the earliest. This is me doing all the preparation at its minimum. Following it as directly as I did, we have full stats, uh, full stamina. All right, the health is just for comfort value, but you definitely want to value the stamina. We have all the Divine Beasts and their powers. Uh, and from the last part, we have them uh, on the file we're going to start up on again. My main file for the final fight. We have them at uh, max potency. They'll come back twice as fast. And you are now ready to play the game that they intentionally wanted you to play. Uh, a huge you know, open world explorer with fun aspects with a Zelda theme. Not a Zelda skin, a Zelda theme. And for all intents and purposes, they did a pretty damn good job. They really did. I would give this game a solid B+. Um, like I said, I've played this game many times before. It was always very fun to do. And I'm really glad that I could uh, have the opportunity to share that uh, with you guys. And show you my hero's path on how I to uh, play Breath of the Wild. So what we're going to do here to finish this up. I, it wouldn't really be right uh, if I didn't fight the final boss. Uh, and just give you my thoughts on that and my thoughts on the game in general. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hop onto my main account, which has all of the hullabaloo with uh, <laughs> the DLC content ready to go, and we'll head there right now. With all of our gear and preparation in hand, we are ready to go ahead and take on the final fight. So let's go ahead and make our way to the Ganon fight, the very center of Hyrule Castle. Ganon for the sting of my revenge! This will be our final opportunity. We will not fail! Let's go, little guy! Now! Open up wide, Ganon! A hundred years in the making. Hold on, princess. Our moment has arrived.
And so we come finally to the Calamity Ganon boss fight. One of only two proper boss fights in this game. And you know what? I really do like it. And I only wish that they kind of rearranged this a bit more. I love the fact that you can react to him. I love the fact that, um, you know, if you've taken the time as a proper final boss should be, if you've taken the time to get a lot of upgrades, to spend time on your character, that um, defeating him is... Well, it's not, it's not tedious like, you know, the field bosses or even the Lionels after you learn their patterns. It's, it's proper. It's easy. And that should be the proper reward. You do get to react to him, or like I said, he'll only be on this wall. You can only bring him down if too much time passes, in which case more opportunity for him to damage you, or if you get successful parry just like that. That sort of thing is really fun, really rewarding for the player. And again, this is a hint of what they were doing really well with the Lionels, but unfortunately, aside from the Lionels themselves, and um, the Ancient Monk from the DLC and Calamity Ganon, the only ones that really do this. And then he does this Invincibility Shield um, thing here. Erosa's Fury can easily knock it down. And you know what? I'm sort of fine with that, but again, it's because they made the bonus to the Divine Beast is cutting his health in half. So it's really weird. I wish they gave us something else. But uh, yeah, I wish the fight had lasted a little bit longer, but no, what we got here was perfectly fine. So a couple of swipes. One, two punch, and he's down. Ganon was born out of a dark past. He is a pure embodiment of the ancient evil that is reborn time and time again. He has given up on reincarnation and assumed his pure, enraged form. If set free upon our world, the destruction will be unlike anything ever seen before. This is so cool, so epic. I can't wait to finish this great game in such an awesome way. All right, everyone, count, count down, down with me. One, two, three, and done. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's kind of it. <laughs> but no, seriously, uh, as I start the fight, you go ahead and hopefully it'll give this to me. I don't remember if I have an empty slot. And uh, hold on, let me check. Yep, I do. Okay, and what's kind of weird is you have to actually go to the trouble of equipping it, like picking it up wasn't enough. Now, it's also cute that they give you your horse. Uh, if you have a registered horse, it'll give it to you or whichever one's in the slot. But why? We have this big old horse, and of course he would go off in the middle of the final fight. So yeah, um, you know, lackluster everything else aside, this is a spectacle fighter, and you know, it's... 
it's not terrible in that regard. It's terrible in other regards. Oh gosh. Okay, you know, for how they were going to end this, it should have been more than what we got here. Um, seriously, all you do is you just run around this big entity, you beat up these, uh, you hit these giant, you know, obvious weak points. Look, it's just, I can be as nonchalant about it as I want, and it's, it's nothing that I have to even bother doing in post-commentary to make sure I do a decent job, aside from that little unplanned uh, fiasco with the phone just now. You go to one end, you shoot him, you go to another end, you shoot him, you hit him on the belly, you hit him in the middle of the head, the you know, evil eye and all that other good stuff, and that's pretty much it. Granted, like I said, spectacle-wise, this is, this is what I imagine you know, the incarnate of Ganon to be. You know, this is really impressive. The height and the, uh, everything else. If only he did something more, <laughs> you know, and it wasn't just, you know, a total pushover. Not even a pushover. He just, he's just sitting there. I, you can take damage from his beam. I've tried because I wasn't sure of whether or not it, it was possible to even, you know, take damage from him. And I guess there's contact damage because my, you know, my bike went away. Um... But other than that, uh, yeah, I can just chill under him right now, and he has no counter to it. I mean, he might move around a tiny bit, and he's like, yeah, I was trying to face you as best as possible. But, uh, yeah. Uh, he's really slow. Um, he has no other attributes. It's just Ganon. Dark Beast Ganon. Uh, gosh, his Twilight Incarnate, Twilight Princess Incarnate, was so much better than this. Uh, okay, I'm pushing it. Okay, so the last fight, our last shot we need is always going to be up in his head. So just go ahead and make your way out here, wait for the updraft. Actually, don't need to be on the horse anymore. Yes, yes, I know. I mean, look at this, this fiery, like, evil mane that he has, you know, is more of like, you know, the evil, like, you know, demon boar. It's just it's so well, you know, drawn out but not well executed, which is what you can say about a lot of the game. Uh, we'll go ahead and wait for him to do his beam attack. So we get the shot here. And that'll be it. Now, a respectable reviewer, Geek Critique, who I appreciate a lot, especially for his Metroid series, had mentioned with the fight with Mother Brain, wasn't meant to be difficult or challenging, but that is an example of how you would do a spectacle fight right. Um, it is actually possible to lose, and this is a good example of why, you know, it should be technically possible for a player to lose. You have to have some sense of urgency. But it really felt like with everything else, you know, with the story with everything that wasn't their main goal. Make a giant open world that will satisfy players in all the exploratory ways, find a bunch of stuff, you know, have fun going out there, and just like a giant sandbox of a Zelda time. And it worked, but this, yeah, not the greatest showing. Once again, now I'll say it here the last time, really hoping that the sequel will be able to fulfill what this did not. You know, it's it's it suffices. I'll more than be glad to let it pass, especially if it serves a greater purpose in, you know, developing anything further. Because I really love this series for its story and for its gameplay. They got the gameplay in a new direction very right, which not a lot of IPs can say that. Uh, or Sonic. But this did extremely well. And I am totally fine with how this turned out, even with this lackluster, abrupt ending. It's fine. It really is. Provided, especially, that the sequel does better. Which I'll be more than happy to do a blind playthrough now that I'm back on uh, YouTube. Uh, or at least back presenting on YouTube. I really want to do a blind playthrough of that. It's obviously not going to be as structured as this one. Uh, because I'll have no idea what I'm doing. But I think it'll be very interesting to look back on it, even for myself. You know, it, it, yeah, they mentioned that one part. Though, there's one sentence difference if you actually go ahead and you find the memories. And um, 
Or at least in that beginning part. I actually haven't done this ending without going through the trouble of getting the memories back. But, you know, tried and true, they made it written either way as if whether or not... There's no way that he isn't going to just happen to come back in the sequel. Uh, something that I thought to be more developed better is the characters, especially our main ones. I'm really hoping that Zelda doesn't just happen to, you know, a la Princess Peach get either taken away, imprisoned, or whatnot in the sequel. It'd be really cool if she was a traveling companion, maybe flush her out a bit more. I know a lot of people didn't like how she was written. I think it was fine for what you were given, but this is their opportunity to go ahead and, you know, change that to make that be something more. And it's something I really hope for entirely. Uh, the field bosses are fine. They're definitely serviceable. But aside from the Lionels, there's no real excitement in getting better gear. So, like, they got the premises and all other stuff down, like I said before. Totally well done. Great open world. It's fun to go find stuff. It's fun to get distracted by all the little things, whether it be collectibles or improving your gear. But there's nothing beyond that point. It's kind of my feeling with games, and this is just me personally. It's kind of my feeling with any game that revolves around collecting things. I don't mind collecting in video games. I really don't. But I'm not the kind of gamer who personally likes to do a game just to collect things. I like collecting things that have a purpose. You know, I'll go in, I'll farm stuff, and I'll grind stuff. I love grinds and uh, lure shooters and slashers, you know, provided they're not doing other ended tactics. But that is another video entirely. I love doing that sort of thing. Borderlands series. Uh, Destiny has a really rocky... Uh, history both itself as the IP and both with me who knows maybe I'll make videos on that just to uh, get my uh, opinions out there on that but you know I like collecting things um, it's really unfortunate that just to keep this cycle of what they had scaled for this uh, iteration of an open world that you keep searching so they necessitated the need for the weapons to break more often um, I mean I can understand that uh, but I really wish that there was ways to improve or, you know, impede that. And I know, like I said, for a first iteration, they wasn't sure how it was going to go. So they had to make sure that everything had essentially a very, uh, neutral point. Very simple, it does one thing or another. Either you have weapons to break a lot and you have to go around collecting them again, which necessitates the exploration, etc., and mapping things out. They really wanted you to spend your time everywhere else that wasn't really covered here. Hence why I keep calling it Preparing to Play Breath of the Wild. The core essence of what would actually be in another Zelda game. Here, that was not the case. It was the exact opposite. And that's something I hope that they can marry together in what will hopefully be a sort of another Majora's Mask incarnation from going through, uh, you know, to a direct sequel. They've done direct sequels before. Uh, most of them were pretty good. Some of them not so much. Phantom Hourglass. Um, uh, especially coming off Wind Waker, which I think was great. I would be very sad, not angry at them, but very sad if they were not able, if they are not able to make up for even some of these. I understand that it's incredibly hard to make this stuff, especially with artisans like Nintendo. They are true artisans. They really are. This game looks amazing. Even if, you know, comparatively it doesn't look the most grandest, you know, overall even if you just look at the Switch, and I'm not talking about that. This game is amazing. It's very well done. It's very self-contained. It's a wonderful game to just pick up and explore. And that is why I chose the path that I did. You can, aside from this final part, which I wanted to include um, for uh, my own personal reasons, I just wouldn't feel right not fighting the final boss uh, and ending a playthrough like that. Okay, now you can go over and do anything else. And then, oh yeah, the final boss is always there. I mean, even though he was more or less lackluster, funny enough, his... Uh, the corrupted Ganon that we fought in the castle was, you know, actually a decent fight. Him and the monk are the only two real bosses in this game. And they're pretty good, but we didn't get enough of that. The mini bosses clash the mini dungeons, the Divine Beasts, really were a letdown. Um, again, gotta give them some slack, and I gotta give them props. They did a very good job here. You know, hats off to Nintendo. For, you know, a lot of eyes were on uh, them, whether or not they were going to be successfully able to transfer something like the Zelda titles over to a game format like this. Um, I wouldn't say it was necessarily a genre change, although, I mean, I guess it would be, you know, including uh, you know, open world. And it would be interesting to think because we wanted Zelda 
with open world if I would be amazing. What we got was open world with a Zelda theme and a little bit of the things that were familiar. Again, the stuff that we wanted, the big dungeons, the big side quests, the characters that we could, you know, get more invested in. We see a little bit of it here and there, like with Riju here on the cutscenes. We see it with Sidon and his personality, and we see it a little bit more in the DLC cutscenes. But gosh, you know, it, it's just not enough on its own. And I really hope that they can fulfill those, meet those um, needs, that I hope they're listening to the consumers. I really don't think we're alone in the Western audiences. Uh, wanting this sort of thing for uh, Breath of the Wild 2. Um, no idea what it's, no idea what its official title will be, but you know, all the same. The champions really missed opportunity. It sucks, but you know, I'm willing to let it go. Maybe they'll use them again. And of course, overarching wise, you know, the story overarching with the uh, timelines. Um, maybe we will be able to play the game where we discover this technology and we'll have champions there who we can get to know representing each of the each of the species in Zelda and maybe we'll get a chance to go with them it's unfortunate because I want to know these champions but you know what maybe we'll get that opportunity again later a spiritual successor no pun intended and who knows maybe we can you know pick up where we left off with these champions you know they they disappeared like the sages did in ocarina of time you know looking over actually it's going to be after the cutscenes here um should be no surprise uh I, yeah you know the hyrulean king hung out for a while uh, i see no reason why we can't you know contact with the spirits you know we've done that in speaking of majora's mask we've done that in that way it'd be really cool if they can do that if they can bring that together and they could you know satisfy that story and character need by channeling these spirits, you know, literally. It would be very interesting because, you know, I'm pretty sure we, you know, successfully sealed off Ganon yet again. It's going to take a little bit of a while. No idea who the major boss is going to be. It'd be really interesting if it was a returning one from some of the other less known bosses in Zelda. But, you know, I'm really glad this game came out. Its existence is incredibly important, especially not just for, you know, Zelda in general, but for video games going forward. This, unlike other games with big open worlds, only seem to tend to get very much bigger. My brother only informed me of a few others that were actually genuinely good. Um, you know, Ubisoft, you know, you gotta mention them. If you don't know, Ubisoft, you know, they were big still with the Assassin's Creed, especially with the big open worlds and big open worlds. And did I mention these open worlds were big? but not really much to do with them. Or there was like three or four things and they're just everywhere. You do a bunch of the same thing over and over again. But here with Breath of the Wild, there is a little bit of that, but with that Nintendo um, art involved, they get fun right. They really do. Nintendo always put a smile on my face and they get fun right. Um, it's fun to get these little, you know, these little things like the Koroks and it's fun to, you know, find these shrines and do these little puzzles. And you'll say, you can definitely say that, yeah, it's a lot of it like that too. There's just like, I don't know, seven or eight other things that you can do. But that variance is enough to keep it lively. This game is not a live service. It's not meant to be replayed over and over again. There comes an end to your exploration. But the journey, about the journey, it was about the journey and it was really fun. And for somebody who likes story with a little bit of side quests, you know, and just like collecting loot, and, you know, getting your character stronger, um, similar to Metroid. I'm actually glad to say that I did enjoy this journey. I'm very glad that you guys could join me, uh, join me for that. I'm really glad to be back on YouTube, and I really hope and pray that, um, it'll be something that I can connect to people, whether directly or indirectly. We're still in the middle of this damn pandemic. I don't know when it will end. I pray it will end very soon. But if not, I hope that these, uh, these episodes that I bring can be insightful and be something to put a smile on your face. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Take care.